Hi, this is Adam Kahn from Sitecore, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate the LinkPad driver for Sitecore. This is a driver for LinkPad that allows you to connect to Sitecore and write link queries against search indexes and make just um, general Sitecore calls uh, quickly and easily. You don't have to bring up Visual Studio um, or any of that. So um, this driver is designed to make it as easy as possible for you to do that. In this particular video, I'm going to be using version 1.5 of the driver. So by the time you're watching this, there may be a newer version available, um, but the same concepts will probably be in place. First thing you need to do is download the driver, which I have already done. Um, to find the driver, if you just go to your favorite search engine and do a search for LinkPad driver for Sitecore, you'll find it. Um, but after you download the driver, then you have to go and add a connection into LinkPad. So in the upper left-hand corner, there's the Add Connection link. Click that. That brings up the Choose Data Context window. In the lower left-hand corner, there's a button to view more drivers. Click that button. And that shows you the featured drivers. Um, this is coming from a web page. Um, what you want to do is you want to pick your the LPX file, which is the driver that you would have downloaded from my blog. So in the lower left-hand corner, click the Browse button and find the driver that you've downloaded. And after you do that, then you should see that the driver is listed in the Choose Data Context screen. So pick that driver and then click the next button in the lower right-hand corner. This brings up the Sitecore Connection screen. So first thing you need to do is enter the Sitecore client URL. My Sitecore server is running on SC72, so I need to put that in here, SC72 slash Sitecore. Sitecore username with domain, Sitecore password, and then the path to the web root for Sitecore. So this is the web root of the IIS site. So I'm just going to browse, and mine is in SC72 website. And that's the minimal amount of information that you need to provide. You can test the connection to make sure that you've entered in valid values in here. So that is in the lower left-hand corner, the test connection button. Click that, and the driver will make a connection over to your Sitecore server and um, make sure that the version of Sitecore you're running is compatible with the driver you're using. So I can see here that I'm using Sitecore 7.2, um, and the connection settings are valid. I can click OK. And if I'm ever unsure of any of these settings, there is a little help link here. So this will give you a pop-up and tell you the purpose of the field and an example of a value. So after I finish that, then I see my connection over on the left-hand side. And based on the Sitecore server I'm connected to, there are three indexes that are listed here. And these are coming from the Sitecore server. So if your Sitecore server has additional indexes, you'll see more options in here. Uh, but underneath here, you'll see each of the indexes. Uh, there are a few different ways of using the connection from here. Um, first is if you want to just write a free form uh, expression. So for language, I'm going to pick C sharp expression. And then for connection in the dropdown, I'm going to pick my connection to SC72. And now I'm able to just write a link statement. So from um, item in index where item name equals home, I can select item item ID. Now, I'm getting the code complete or the IntelliSense because I have the licensed version of LinkPad I paid um, to, to register. Uh, it's definitely worth it. Um, without it, you can still use this driver. You just don't get the, the code complete, the IntelliSense. So now I'm going to run this, and I've got my link statement running. Okay, so that's one way that I'm able to use this. Uh, before I go on to some of the other ways, I just want to explain so how, how does LinkPad know what type of item to use here? 
Well, if I put my mouse over the index name, I'll see that this is an instance of iQueryable with search result item as the generic type. That is configured on the connection. So if I go and select my connection over on the left, I can see here search result item next to the server name. That's telling me the generic type for the iQueryable items that are appearing underneath here. If I want to change that to a different type, I can right click on the connection, go down to properties. That's going to bring up that same screen that I had when I initially configured the connector. And now I can go over to the advanced tab. And on the advanced tab, the first setting in here is search result type. So that is the generic parameter that's going into the iQueryable. The default value is search result item, but I can pick a different POCO type if I want. And I do that by clicking the browse button. Browse button allows me to pick an assembly and I can do that. I'll go onto my Sitecore server and I'll pick Sitecore kernel. Now, the only POCOs that are available with this version is, are POCOs that have a public default constructor. So the class in order to be listed here, or the type in order to be listed here, has to be a class, and it has to have a publicly available default constructor or a constructor that has no arguments in here. So if I try to look for, say, the psychordata.items.item type, It's not listed in here, and that's because it doesn't have a constructor that matches those constraints. But if I do a search for, say, Sitecore data, Sitecore data ID, that is listed in here. Now, um, I can pick that. I also click OK. And now if I change this to ID, I'm gonna have that as my POCO. So I see that in the code complete. So that's how I am able to change the POCO that's being used. If I go back into my properties, I can reset this and click OK. And now if I go back in here, I'm back to what I had before. Okay, so that's the first way that I'm able to do a link expression. Uh, close out of here and create a new query. And I something else that I can do is I can select on one of these indexes and then just drag the index over into the query area. Now, when I do this, a couple of things happen. One, the connection is automatically selecting the connection that I dragged from. Um, but then I also get some sample code in here. And this is sample code that's hard coded in, but you can change it. Uh, and the idea here is just to give you uh, just some basic link statements so that you can run and confirm that the connection is working. So if I run this, I should see some results. Okay. The generic parameter in here for the iQueryable is also coming from the same place as it was before. So if I go back in here and you know, change this back over to ID, save this. Now, if I get rid of this code and drag again over here, now I see that ID is coming in here. Now, if I do that, then um, this expression isn't going to work because the expression is assuming that the type is a um, search result item or an, a class that inherits from it. So in here, this isn't going to work. 
Okay, so it doesn't have, so I do have to change the, the statements in here, the expressions in here, but uh, this value is coming from that setting. So I'll just come back in here one more time and reset this. And just make sure that it's still working. You can run it and now it's working again. Okay, so that is another way that I'm able to write link queries against search indexes. But I can also use LinkPad as a way of sending commands to Sitecore. And to do that, I just need to make sure that I have a connection selected. But now in here, I'm able to use standard Sitecore API calls. So I'm going to get my master database. And I'll select single item. Assign that to a variable. And now if item isn't null, then I want to get the name and I can display this. And maybe the ID display that. And here I can see the values that are coming back. So I am able to use the Sitecore API here. Now, I can't say that every single part of the Sitecore API is going to work. Um, it probably won't. But um, enough of the context is available within LinkPad to be able to run these kind of um, expressions um, and should be able to read and write items um, just fine through here. Um, another thing to mention is how is it that I am able to just type database? So the, um, the namespaces are being imported automatically and that's something that's also handled through the connection. So if I go back into my connection And in the namespaces, in the advanced section under additional namespaces, these are all of the namespaces that are added automatically and they're available whenever you're in one of these query boxes in LinkPad. So if I get rid of Sitecore data, now database doesn't appear. It's not coming up here. Um, I get the little red arrow and this will tell me that I can add some using statements and this is just exposing to me that the namespaces haven't been imported but i can fix that by going back into my connection properties over to the advanced tab and just resetting the additional namespaces so this will set me back to the default which includes sitecore.data and save that and now i get my code complete because the namespace is being inserted Okay, so that is how you install and configure and use the LinkPad driver for Sitecore. Um, if you have any questions or comments or feedback, um, you can send it over to my blog. It is called Getting to Know Sitecore. You can put that into your search engine. And my, uh, if you want to tweet me, I am ADC Sitecore.